Hi everyone, and welcome back to Transformers of the Moon. In this video, we will take you through all of our non-Transformers toy displays. So let's begin. We start off what we have called the 80s room with our original Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull set, before quickly moving on to our collection of vintage and updated Thundercats figures. The vintage toys have been kept in the loft for 20 years, but we now clean them up and put them out on display. Below the Thundercats are two shelves dedicated to Bandai's GoBots. We decided to display these in the alternative modes as frankly they look better like that. Most of the toys are not in great shape as they were for second hand, but we've had them since the mid 80s with Bug Bite and Baron Von Joy being our first two from serial packs. We come onto a shelf of another interest of ours, Dinosaurs, before moving on to the bottom section of the first cupboard with an Escaflone, some Stickfuss figures and Nemesite from Matchbox Parasite line. One of our favourite lines from the 80s was the Visionaries, which is how we begin the next cupboard. Panning over their vehicles, we move down towards our first superhero shelf, where you'll see our Spider-Man display, along with Mego, Secret Wars and other figures. Below this is our main Visionaries display, which contains both loose and cardio figures, including an engineering pilot of Darkstorm, who has some minor mould differences. How do you follow on from Visionaries, you ask? Well, how about an often forgotten 80s toy line of Ring Raiders? Yep, you don't get to see these small guys that often, and many would say for good reason. Next, we have a small Star Wars display, which features some Action Fleet and Transformers crossover figures. As we pan down, we come to our first shelf of Dino Riders. Now you'll notice that we display this line without their weapons. This is because we prefer the dinosaurs and it joins on to the other dinosaur statue shelf you saw earlier. Finally, we end this cupboard with a mixed assortment of lines including Brave Star, Centurions, Dungeons and Dragons, Toy Story Lego, Professor Wito's, Masks, Monster Man Pockets, Wrestling Figures and a very old McDonald's toy. We'll start the next cupboard from the bottom which has a variety of Japanese figures. These include various Microman, Reveltech and Voltron figures, as well as some of the PVC toys from TV Boy and TV Magazine. As we pan up, you'll see our second shelf of Dino Riders. Again, the weapons for the Dino Riders are stored separately, so you won't see those in this video. If you look closely though, there is a Stickfuss bag there, and inside that are the Rulons and the Dino Riders themselves. The next two shelves contain various Star Wars figures that we own. Some are vintage, some are modern. The vintage ones are quite badly damaged really. In most cases they're second hand from car boot sales and flea markets. As we pan up to the next shelf, you'll see the Takara Brave Line figures that we own, which is Death Gary on the left hand side and the Masterpiece Great X Kaiser figure on the right hand side. Amazing he's in the show, wonderful toy. There's also the black Escaflone figure from the DVD box set and the gold Macross Stealth Valkyrie toy. Finally, at the top of this cupboard, we have the 2012 classic turtle figures. Yes, as you can see, Leo had fallen over at this stage. Well, well, what can you do? On the right hand side there is Gold Lytan in his presentation case. You get one more glance at the Dagger Assault before we move on to the He-Man collection. No 80s display would be complete without He-Man, and so that's where we're going to start off now, with the original classic toys. So these figures are um, pretty much ones that we've owned from when they were first released. It's divided out over about four shelves. We've tried to group the figures into a kind of a quasi year order, although we've also wanted to keep characters like the Horde together and the Snake Men together as you'll see as we pan through. Now this is actually in a corner glass cabinet which can make it a little bit awkward to film as you can see so we'll do our best to give you an idea of who's in there. So you can see figures in there like Scareglow, King Randor, Thunder Punch E-Man, Extendar standing at the back because he's you know, so much taller than the other characters it's quite handy for that. Below them, so this shelf contains the Horde and Snake Men. Um, yes, they're in a bit of a weird angle as you can see because uh, the idea was to set them up into like a fight scene. So you've got Squeeze there hugging Grizzlor at the back. It doesn't really work that well when the, when the cupboard's closed because you see Drag Store there is facing the wrong way, so we need to alter that. The bottom of this cupboard is kind of a dumping ground at the moment. There's various G.I. Joe vehicles in there as well as a couple of He Man toys as well. Above the second He-Man cupboard, you can see the hard hero statue of Unicron, but we'll quickly head back to those Masters of the Universe. 
The top two shelves within this cupboard are dedicated to the 2000X series. We decided to split these shelves between the forces of Skeletor and the Masters themselves. The remainder of the cupboard contains the newer MOTU Classics line. We tried to stay away from buying the classic figures of characters we owned originally, but as you'll see as we pan through the shelves, we failed to stick to this in all cases. So what we decided to try to do was to separate the shelves into new characters, characters from the original show, and re-envisioned characters. Only we ran out of space, so it became a bit of a free-for-all in the end. We're best known for our collection of Transformers, but the, probably this toy line that we have the most figures of after that is G.I. Joe, or Action Force as it was called over in the UK for quite a while. So what we decided to do with our Joe collection was to split the shelves to have a kind of a versus theme. So you've got Joes and Cobras over most of the shelves. We also wanted to try to group the Joes together with similar types of characters and the same for the Cobras. In this case, on this particular shelf you've got G.I. Joe Renegade, so that's fairly straightforward. You've got your Joes on your left, your Cobras on the right hand side. As you pan down here, what you'll see is there's the Cobra Snow Troops there, and the Ice Vipers, Snow Serpents. As you pan over to the left, past the Snowman, you'll see there's kind of the Snow Joes. You know, what are you going to do when you get cold? Well, why not head to the desert? So that's what, what we've decided to do below. So on the left hand side here, you've got some of the Desert Troops of the Joes, and on the right hand side, Major Blood, leading the Cobra Guards and the Crimson Guards from the deserts. Below that is Slaughter's Renegades and they're taking on some of the zombies so you know, they've got their work out from there. This bottom shelf you'll see some of the original Action Force toys along with some of the Roll Out Roll Call exclusives and some early G.I. Joe figures so you can see there those bags are, are sealed. There's also a Thundercats little thing there as well. As we pan over to this next shelf, you'll start off with this 18 box set. Now, it is actually complete, but all the pieces have fallen out because it's standing up. And yes, that was a Highlander sword on top of that cupboard as well, signed by Adrian Paul. This shelf is one of the exceptions. You won't see any Joes on here. It's purely Cobra Commander and the Cobra Guards. Below that, you've got Serpentel, Dr. Mindbender leading the Vipers, both the original figures and then the more up-to-date reissues. What re reinventions. As you come down here, you've got some of the earlier Joes there with a part of the Weather Dominator going on. And as you pan down, you can kind of see go through time and some of the more later figures there, like Quick Kicks in there, Budo, a Big Boa. This is our Ninja Shelf, so it kind of through the ages, you've got some of the original toys in there, you've got some of the newer toys in there, you've got some Ninja Force in there. And as you pan down to the bottom with the Cobra Bunker there, Got Raptor and um, they were they fighting Battle Force 2000. As you come down to the bottom, you've got kind of the poorer Joe figures, but they're in there with a havoc just to make them look a bit better. This final cupboard of Joes starts off with a bit of a water theme. So what you can see is there's a Hydra Viper there leading some of the Cobra Divers. You've got some Cobra Eels again, some of the new figures, some of the original figures, Copperhead. And as you pan across, you can see that there's an, there's an Undertow. There's another eel there, you've got the Baroness, and what are they aiming for? Well, it's the Devilfish there with Shipwreck, Deep Six, Wetsuit. Pretty much they're the only three kind of water joes that we've got. As we quickly pan up, this is more of an urban shelf, so you can see that kind of low lights in there, Mutton Junkyard, against some of the Cobras. Onto the next shelf is some of the G.I. Joe Retaliation line, so this is when they came out originally in early 2012. Um, just kind of sitting there waiting really. Above that is our Dreadnought shelf. So this is both the six pack of Dreadnoughts as well as the original toys. It's pretty much split left to right, new versus old. Moving on, you'll see our second version of that Stalker toy and then this is our Python Patrol shelf in there. Cobra Guards, Vipers, Crimson Guards. As we move up, we move more in towards the jungle. So as you can see, you've got some Joes here lined up, getting ready to fight someone. And you've got some jungle bats in there. You've got Rock Viper. If you look above the Rock Viper, you'll see there's one hanging up there between the, the cupboards. Because he can, you know, why not? He looks quite cool in the end, as you set it up. As you move up, you get more towards the pilot. So everyone in here has some sort of like air theme. Again, you've got Countdown there hanging up 
across the top because obviously so if kind of space gives them a little bit more height above that you'll see some of the Joe vehicles which we're keeping out at the moment like the Sky Striker up there till we pan down into the next cupboard so that's the Joe's done and we're moving back towards the GoBots as you can see here from the shelf of Rock Lords now they're just, it's just Rock Lords, they're just cool well they're funny at least um, and as you move down and you'll see some of the early 12 inch G.I. Joe toys looking quite poor now compared to things like the Sideshow Collectibles and the Hot Toys you've got Grungy and Courageous in there the GoBot combined suits and then some of the cardboard um, Transformers from TV magazine and finally at the bottom of this shelf again you'll see some more Joe vehicles in there and a Mr. T from the A-Team so that's basically that cupboard so we'll just do a quick pan just to give you an idea of how they're all kept together so you can see them again as you've panned over them so you've got Joe's moving on towards he -Man. We're going to move on now towards a couple of cupboards which have a bit more of a Japanese theme. But we're starting off first of all with a couple of more Star Wars toys. As you move in here, what you'll see are some Revel Tech, Micromen figures in there, but there's Gunsmith Cats, you've got Trigun, you've got Lupin the Third. As we pan down, you'll see some of the Arkham Asylum toys. In here, in this case, Batman, Joker, and Harley Quinn. They're looking pretty cool. There's some Doctor Who toys in the front. And as you pan down, you'll see this is our Death Note shelf. So you've got 12 inch Death Note characters along with Canon, and you've got Iron there from Phantom. On the shelf below that, you'll see is a Tenshi Moyo. So you've got the 12 inch Tenshi Moyo figures, there's some plushes, as well as some capsule toys. Finally, at the bottom, you've got Ichigo from Bleach, as well as more Bleach capsule toys. This next cupboard highlights our Final Fantasy collection. Now it's a little dark in here because of the lighting and the positioning of the particular cupboard. But what we've done is to group the toys into their different series. So it starts off with the Advent Children figures and it moves on to the Final Fantasy. Then it comes on to Final Fantasy 13 as well as 13 2. As you can see that shelf needs uh, extra height because of Odin as well as the toys in general being taller than the others. As you move down we have Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X-2 starting off with X-2 here on the left and moving over towards X on the right hand side. Below that you'll see figures from Final Fantasy XII along with Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX. And they kind of wrap up that little cupboard. So that's our Final Fantasy collection. As you can see we're fans of the series and fans of the, of the toys. Before we end, I thought I'd show you one more Transformers display which we have. So these are some test shots and samples. In this particular case here, you can see it says Andy C R and D. That's from Hasbro Europe. And then you got down here some Armada toys. So this cupboard contains some test shots as well as some lunchtime specials. So thank you first of all for watching this video. If you want to see more of our Transformers, check out the website. You will see the links in the description below. And also check out our Transformers toy display video as well which has been on YouTube for about six months seems to be fairly popular. If there's anything else you'd like us to highlight please let us know in the comments. Thank you. Transformers at the moon. Fantastic.